Hi everyone, um, this week I put up a haul video which included some of the Tim Holtz Distress Crackle paints and I've had quite a lot of questions about them, about what the colours look like, how easy they are to use and how they compare to regular Crackle Medium, what the differences are. So hopefully this video is going to address those questions. Um, I'm going to start by showing you the colours that I've got. I don't have all the colours yet um, but these are the, the samples that people requested. So. This is Dusty Concord, Milled Lavender, Faded Jeans, Shabby Shutters, Tattered Rose and the last one there is Walnut Stain. And on this piece I've got the Brushed Pewter which is one of the metallic ones, the Antique Bronze which this one has a silver undertone so you need to really stir it well but it is a nice colour. I'd say it's more copper than Antique Bronze though. Um, Picket Fence is the white one, Antique Linen and that is the Rock Candy which is the clear one. So they're the samples and I was also asked about whether you could Glimmer Mist over those or not and the answer is yes you can. So I did some samples to show that. Um, I started with one of the light colours, it's over the Rock Candy sorry, um, the request was can you Glimmer Mist over the Rock Candy. So this is the Frost Glimmer Mist over the rock candy and you can see the difference where the, the rock candy ends um, so it's picked up the blue quite well even though it's a light colour and this one was over a dark colour because I wanted to show you both light and dark this is the red velvet and again you can see it's picked up the colour really well and you've still got the crackles there and the last one was over uh, sorry a distress ink over it so this was the vintage photo rubbed over it and again it's picked up the ink quite well. Okay and I want to show you a couple of projects using those as well so you can see them in use. So this is a um, small wall hanging that I did just to show you the paints really and I was using up scraps so I probably can't remember exactly how I did the background and things. It was a textured background but the crackle paint is round the edges and this was using the antique bronze you can see it over here just around the edge and on this side too and there's a little bit at the top so that's the first project shown the the antique bronze and it is quite good for edging things or you can use it over a whole background as well and the second project this one uses the picket fence which is probably my favorite um, picket fence and rock candy I probably use the most and the background was a starburst stains background on this and what happens is it's actually picked up the colour the colour has seeped through from the starburst stains into the the rock candy and I quite like the effect of that but if you didn't like it um, there's a bit there that's that's more white I added some gesso over the top of it just to see if that um, would stop the colour from seeping through and it does so if you don't like that effect there is a way around it um, some more of the, the crackle there and just to give you an overview of the, the full project there it's just a, a small tag I made okay so that is the um, Tim Holtz Distress Crackle the other type of crackle is the regular crackle finish or crackle medium there's lots of different brands the one I have is the Delta brand and this tends to give larger crackles and it's a more lengthy process. So the just going back to the distress crackle, all you would need to do with that, it does say to shake the bottle first. It comes with a brush <clears throat> and you literally just paint it onto your project and that is it. You wait for the cracks to appear. Once the cracks start to appear, which is after about 10-15 minutes it says that you can heat dry it although I've not tried that because it does dry quite quickly um, within half an hour I'd say depending obviously humidity and um, how warm your house is so that is really really easy this one however is a lengthier process and you get different effects from it so I'll show you a sample <clears throat> there's two samples here um, this is the first side okay so fairly fine cracks on there. You get the two-tone colour um, with this and I'll explain how that's achieved in a minute and I'll just show you the back of this as well. 
same medium, different effects, much larger crackles there. So I'll just go through briefly how to achieve that. You need a base coat of acrylic. So I chose a metallic purple for this one. Um, doesn't shine through that well. And your base colour is what colour your cracks are going to appear, as you can see. So you paint on your base coat, then you paint on, um, when your base coat is dry, the crackle medium. And then once that is almost dry, so it's a little bit tacky still, then you would paint over the top with another colour of acrylic. So really it's a, a three step process, it's acrylic, crackle medium, more acrylic. Um, and obviously you have to think about the colours that go together for that and you have the waiting time um, for layers to dry. But once you paint on your top coat the cracks start to appear within a few minutes. Now if you paint on your crackle medium um, in the same direction that you paint your top coat this is the effect you get. Smaller crackles, but obviously you get brush marks in it as well. Um, if you paint on your top coat in the opposite direction, so if you paint it on your crackle medium um, coming down and then you paint on, in this case it's red, the top coat, if you painted that going across then you get this effect, the crackles are larger and there's more sort of a, a cross hatching effect. Okay, So that's the difference really. Tim Holtz, one step, but you can have one colour there. These, uh, the regular medium, obviously there's the three stages to it. You need two colours of paint, a lot of weighting, but you do get that to two-toned effect that you can't achieve with the Tim Holtz ones. Um, although you can um, rub ink into the crackles afterwards and change it slightly. So I hope that's useful to somebody. Um, Leave me any comments if you've got any more questions or you want to know anything else about them. Um, and bye for now.